welcome to this episode of the Corporate Escapist TV show and podcast. I am your host, Christine Ness. I am delighted because we're doing a role reversal because I was on the very beautiful Kylie's podcast about two weeks ago. And now we're, I'm actually really delighted because we're going to have so, a lot of great conversations today. Um, but welcome, beautiful, for being here. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Christine. Thank you so much for having me. And hello, everyone. <laughs> so I, as everyone knows, I can get carried away. So I'm going to hand it over to you to introduce yourself. And then we're going to have some really great conversation for the next 20 minutes. Yeah, hi, my name's Kylie Pinwell. I'm a clinical nutritionist and I have the Hormone Hub podcast and I sort of run programs and support uh, professionals, business leaders uh, or women in business leaders who are going through the roller coaster of perimenopause and menopause. So essentially, you know, helping women navigate, you know, understand better what's going on with their body, how to get their energy back, how to stay on top of like mood swings, clear the brain fog, um, and just sort of feel like equip them with the tools so they feel confident knowing how to navigate uh, what can be a crazy time of life. Oh, yeah. So this is why I was on Kylie's um, podcast because not only I talked about obviously my journey of endometriosis, but obviously I am in perimenopause, which is just amazing. Like, like, like it's not, um, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, I, and I really want to talk about this today because I think, you know, a lot of the times, you know, women in particular, we get to a point where the kids have left you know, home or, you know, they're all full-time in school, you know, and you start to think, okay, what else? What am I, what am I going to do for myself? And then you make a decision to potentially start your own business and then you go through things such as perimenopause and then so, you've got something else to deal with. Yeah, I know. I know. And I speak to a lot of business owners and it's, it's yeah, it's crazy that we do these things to ourselves. But you know, I think most of us who go into business for ourselves, you know, generally we're quite high driven and genuinely we are, you know, goal driven. We want to achieve, we want to do well. And, you know, and then all of a sudden in the background, our hormones are sort of on their, on a roller coaster doing their own thing. And, you know, like overwhelm kicks in, we're exhausted. We're just, you know, sort of at that point. And I do see a lot of women who, um, you know, burn down their businesses or who want to burn down their businesses or they you know they feel that they're not showing up for their team they're not showing up for their clients um I had a woman you know she's now a client contact me she was sort of like oh my god she goes I need to do something she said I was rude to a client today and she said it was not the client it was me um so yeah so I think before we do sort of too much damage to our businesses um you know it's important to sort of like acknowledge what is going on and how and I think the more we can understand how perimenopause can impact us not just physically but mentally and emotionally as well um you know I think it can make a huge difference to a lot of women yeah because I mean I'm finding I need what I call them my nanny naps um and you know I need those in the afternoon just to sort of like a 20 minute sort of just either lay down whether or not I don't normally go to sleep, but it's just like that. Oh, I just need my body just to turn off for 20 minutes to recharge. Whereas I used to be able to go, you know, 5 a.m. in the morning all the way probably until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, like little sleep. Yeah. But I need that re- recharge. So yeah. I've had to, I guess, restructure sort of my business as well to be able to help me yeah. recharge and to actually be on point for my clients. Yeah, absolutely. And it's good that you do take that time, um, you know, and I think as women also too, we're not naturally good at taking care of ourselves either. So we will make sure that everyone else is okay. We'll make sure that, you know, on the home front, you know, partner, kids, they're happy. We'll make sure clients are happy. We'll look after team members. We'll make, we'll look after the dog you know before we'll look after ourselves so and I think that's that's a really big part that we need to you know really sort of we need to step up for ourselves because if we don't you know you can't pour from an empty cup so you can't show up as your best self if you you know if you if you're feeling like you're dragging yourself around that is so true because I think so many business owners we get to like either burnout or we we 
we sometimes don't even recognize that it is burnout we sort of go oh my god this is dragging or this is just not working where it's just your body's way of saying hey you need to slow down you need to take care of yourself for you to be able to be at the maximum potential Absolutely. And I think we're very capable. That's the, and that's the problem when you are very kind of high achieving at the same time. We're very capable. And, you know, we can push through, you know, we can like I feel like our life's falling apart in the background, but we can, you know, show up for clients. We can show up for meetings. We can, you know, we can push through and get mm. the things done that they're doing. But yeah, yeah it, we can only keep that up for so long. Yeah, exactly. What do you say? Like, I mean, we've had this conversation um, before and, you know, like I went to the doctor, you know, they're like, going, oh, I don't think that you are, but your body is telling you that there are signs that you are going through changes. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to not listen to the expert, but then it's also hard to ignore your body. Yeah, definitely. And that's the thing, like we all, I think it's natural to start at your doctor. So, you know, what can happen early in perimenopause is we can be feeling really tired. Maybe we're not sleeping as well. Maybe we're starting to gain weight, you know, for no sort of particular reason. Um, and this is sort of like those early days of perimenopause. And perimenopause isn't, you know, it's something that we've sort of only recently been, you know, opening up the conversation. And a lot of doctors do dismiss women. I speak to women every day and, you know, not meaning to or not wanting to doctor bash. There are some great doctors out there, but, you know, it's very common for women to sort of be dismissed um, and sort of say, oh, you're too young. But the reality is those hormonal changes can happen, sort of start to happen in our mid thirties. And perimenopause is that sort of two to 10 years in the lead up to menopause. So menopause is when we officially haven't had a period for a year. Um, the average age in Australia, you know, I guess in Western society is about uh, 51. Um, and of course, you know, because we're on marinas and we're on the pill and we're on, maybe we've had a hysterectomy or, you know, cancer treatment or something like that. So maybe we've gone into um, you know, early menopause, and you know, we're not really sure either. But, you know, just like we start our periods, there's such a great big range of ages. So it can be like as young as seven or eight, it can be as late as sort of 15, 16. Menopause is the same. So to be dismissed, and, you know, be told that you're too young for menopause, you know, you need to go back and find another doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's also like, as you know, for, you know, we're talking mainly about women, you know, we have such a, a natural intuitive instinct. And I think as business owners, like we can follow that, but then sometimes we forget to really tap into that for our own bodies as self. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it's just paying attention to, to what your body tells you the body doesn't lie yeah. <laughs> so when you know and the changes sort of that perimenopause can bring is you know I, I had a guide there with like 50 different symptoms um so you, you know it could be aches and pains it could be you know women describe it as I feel inflamed um I you know the brain fog is a big one and increased mm. anxiety is very common um, so it's it's paying attention to those signs and, and joining the dots. And, you know, some of those symptoms can be cyclical. So sort of if you do have a cycle, you know, pay attention. Where are you at in your cycle? And if you sort of frame it as, you know, in the 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 day or two before your period and that first day or two of your period that's not the time to do a big long fast and start training for a marathon that's the time where you need to be bunkered down on the lounge watching netflix with some chocolate yeah. <laughs> so so it's paying attention to where you're at in your cycle and then if you think you know you can apply this from a business perspective as well so when we ovulate like that's when we so in the middle of our cycle that's where we're you know we're ripe and we're primed ready to meet a mate and conceive a baby so that's where we're you know we we feel a bit more outgoing we feel you know we're on display because we want to attract that mate in so this is the time to do your presentations this is the time to you know do those big um sort of events where you're putting yourself out there you know pitch yourself to clients you know things like that that's the time of the month 
to be doing those things so when your period comes around you know you can put your head under the doona and not talk to the world (laughs) absolutely Uh, women who who align their calendars yeah to fit around that which yeah it does. I, I mean, I was at an event last year and they were talking about that. And I was like, I've never heard it before. Mm. However, like they're in marketing. And I'm like going, like you see them show up like, and now, like now I know, you know, I mean, obviously with women, like we're sort of like, you, you can tap into certain things, but you know, it, it really is true that you can start to sort of understand like your body, you know, like, you know, like for myself, like I know, like, come two o'clock I'm like I can hit a wall um yeah. with it um and when you talked about the aches and pains it was really interesting I'm like walking funny the other day and like someone said are you okay I'm like it's just the old lady bones are just kicking in but if you know sort of okay there's something else happening and it is just one of those other symptoms to start you know looking into as well yeah, that's it. And it's it's just being aware of them and joining the dots. Yeah. And, you know, perimen- as we go through perimenopause and menopause, like it's, you know, a good sort of reminder, like it is a natural transition and we are meant to go through it. Um, and what is really interesting is, you know, in certain cultures, you know, like Japan, for instance, you know, South American cultures, they don't even have a word for perimenopause. They don't have a word for menopause. They don't have a word for hot flushes because they it doesn't apply. You know, it just doesn't happen. So it's very much, you know, how we live our life and our lifestyles and, you know, I think the pace of life that we live can very much have an impact on, um, you know, our, our cycles and also our hormonal symptoms as well. Yeah. I think one of the the key things that I've learned is obviously, you know, you can reinvest your money back into your business, but we forget as business owners to reinvest the money back into ourselves so we can be sustainable in our business. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the thing. If we, we are our business, okay, we, we are not our business, but you know, the end of the day, we're the driving force. So if we are tired, if we're constantly fatigued, if we're cranky, if we're, you know, just feeling annoyed and exhausted and crappy with the world, it's going to show up in our business at some point. So, you know, by, by sort of taking a step back, investing in yourself, and this is like the whole theme of International Women's Day was investing in women. Um, And, you know, and I did speak about, you know, investing in yourself because, you know, you need to be at your best for your business, you know, Mm -hmm. but also in your personal life as well. Yeah, absolutely. And like, what's the process for people? Like they're thinking, okay, well, I'm starting to get these symptoms, you know, and they potentially want to go down an alternative route. Like what's the process with working with you and, you know, sort of the different modalities and all of that that you bring into it? Yeah, yeah. So I run a a sort of a 12-week program. So looking at you very holistically as you know, you are a whole person, you are not a symptom, you are not a job, you're not a diagnosis. So what we do first is we start off, you know, getting the foundations of nutrition in place, because if we and if you're already eating a fairly healthy diet, we all know what healthy eating looks like, right? (laughs) Whether or not we go there is another thing, but we all know what it looks like. So it's just coming back to those foundations of, you know, like a healthy, are you putting in the right nutrients at each meal? Now, what we want to do here is make sure that you're eating enough and also making sure that, you know, you're eating foods that are going to keep your blood sugar stable. So a big part of that energy, you know, we look for foods that are going to pick us up and then what goes up must come down, right? So we have those big energy crashes. So we want to make sure that you're fueling your body, you're getting the right balance of nutrients. So we're keeping that that blood, those blood sugar levels and therefore your energy and your mood a lot more even. So getting the basics right first. Then we look at, you know, how do we um, (laughs) get the inflammation down? So my biggest perimenopause symptoms is my words just disappear out of (laughs) I'll be halfway through a sentence. I know what was that word I was looking for? My brain just doesn't. But good to know if that happens to you, ladies. It is not dementia. It is definitely a perimenopause and menopause thing. (laughs) 
Um, so yeah, so we want to get that inflammation down. So we want to sort of like work on, again, it comes back to food, like what foods are triggering inflammation in your body. So yeah. we want to identify those and it's different for all of us. Yeah. Get that get that inflammation down. So that naturally helps resolve digestive issues, those aches and pains. Um, you know, we can, there's so much we can do just by tweaking your nutrition for women who suffer from a lot of headaches and things like that. Mm. So it's, it's getting that, um, you know, the inflammation down. Then we sort of want to have a look at, you know, how's your body working? How is your digestive system working? Are you absorbing the nutrients from your food? Are you pooping them out properly? Because if you're not going to the toilet regularly, um, you know, all of those toxins get back reabsorbed back into your body, um, you know, and that's not going to make you feel good, is it? then you know like how's your liver working so our liver is like our big filter so it gets rid of our excess hormones it gets rid of our you know cholesterol if you know weight loss is a goal you know the unsexy side of weight loss that no one tells us is we break down body fat in our liver and we poop it out so if your liver and your digestive system aren't working that well it's harder for you it will be harder for you to lose weight so we want to make sure all of those like body systems are working so that's kind of like what we do from a, a nutrition perspective. But then, you know, there's a lot of um, mindset and lifestyle pieces that come into play. So how we manage stress. So when we're sort of talking hormones in perimenopause and menopause, cortisol is our number one en enemy. <laughs> so and so many of us are walking around, you know, and I think as particularly as business owners you know we tend to also be perfectionists and you know all of the things so we and again we push through we push through and our ability to cope with stress is our capacity for that is enormous so what we want to do is just how do we like calm down that stress response and calm down that cortisol response because cortisol will mess with our body without us even realizing it so disrupts our sleep you know it, it creates anxiety um it you know can create digestive issues you know if you ever get butterflies in your tummy and you know you either you know constipation i see a lot you know directly linked or diarrhea so it can go both ways um so and you know weight gain is another big one with cortisol so you know pretty much every aspect of our health is impacted by stress so what we want to do as well as getting you know the nutrition foundations right getting our body working well is you know working on combating um stress and the impacts of stress yeah so, you know, self-care all of those all of those good things that we are not very good at <laughs> absolutely i love it that the fact that it is a very holistic approach because I mean, I think mindset in anything is key. Um, and especially when we are busy, you know, running the business, like we can have the mindset for the business, but sometimes we don't have the mindset for self either. Yeah. Yeah. They're actually two different things. Oh, absolutely. And I think we need to step back and, you know, like we said earlier, if, you know, we're investing in our business, we need to invest in ourselves so we can show up as best we can for our business. Mm. And our family as well so often you know we'll be stressed to the eyeballs and we'll take it out on you know partner kids as well so it's just sort of how do we how do we calm the farm you know so we can show up the way we want to show up you know be the mum that we want to be be the partner we want to be um because a lot of women you know and I hear all the time you know they're just sort of like it's not who I am yeah and, um, it's kind of heartbreaking but you know we're all guilty of it too yeah. I hear so many times people go, oh, it's just too late for me. Don't worry about it. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, you know, and I think a beautiful example, the queen. Yeah. She lived till, what was yeah. she, 96 or 4, 96. She was yeah. riding horses, you know, yeah. just a little while That's ago. It. Yeah. If we are now sort of in our 40s and 50s and we are thinking that we want to live to a 90 or 100, we're only halfway through. Yeah. So we've got we've had half our life in this body and we've got the rest of our life, you know, the second half of our life in this body. So it's never too late to make a change. It's never too late to start looking after your body. Um, you know, we can't, you know, let go. We can't undo what 
what's been done. So just draw a line in the sand and go, okay, now I'm going to step into this half of my life and I'm actually going to take care of my body. And we we were lucky enough as a family a few years ago to travel around Australia and with our kids. So we had the kids were little at that stage and you know we were traveling you know, there weren't many families out on the road. So we were traveling with the grey nomads and the grey nomads definitely fell into one of two camps. So you had old mate and Mrs. Mate who heaved themselves up out of chairs and they couldn't do anything with kind of that. And you're in a caravan, right? So hear everything without grunting, farting, snorting. They snored all night, you know, but we also, but they were literally pulling a caravan around Australia. So they would plonk the caravan, get out of the van, and, you know, and sit all day because there were knee things going on and there was hips. Mm. And they just didn't have the energy or the mobility to go and actually then explore. But then the other sort of camp was like the 70 year and 80 year olds who would, oh, you know, do the big 20K walks, but they would sort of they'd do it in their own time. But we'd turn around and they're like only 20 minutes behind us. <laughs> and they just had the energy to, to do it and explore and, and be active. Um, so it was really eye-opening for us and it was a really big kind of, uh, I guess, aha sort of moment. We're like, you know what, when we were old, we want to be those guys. You know, we don't want to be those guys. Yeah. Um, so... Um... Absolutely. And it's interesting, you know, like I think there's, that's where the mindset and also I guess the giving back to self comes into it because if you can honour, you know, I guess I, I see for business owners, it's more like the legacy. It's, you know, what's the the end result that you want to achieve. So if you invest in yourself, you're able to probably give even more than what you ever thought that you could achieve. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because if you have energy, you've got everything, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is easier. Everything is better, you know, when you've got the energy to do it. So, mm -hmm. you know, like if I'm talking to an exhausted, burnt out 42 year old and I say to her, come on, you've got to get up at 6.30 in the morning and go for a walk. She's just going to look at me and just go, I can't, you know, so it's, it's, yeah. It's working into that um, and, yeah, shifting the mindset and sort of going, oh, actually, you know, um, and I, I sort of talk about it with my clients, is creating non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and these don't have to, it doesn't mean you can't ever break them, but my sort of personal non-negotiables is my alarm goes off, I get out of bed. So whether that's to, you know, and some days I literally walk the dog around the block but, you know, I'm up and I'm moving or it's Pilates or something like that. My other non-negotiable is every time I get in the car, you know, I've got a full water bottle. So by the time wherever I've been, by the time I get back, I've got an empty water bottle. So that's yeah. sort of my how I get my water intake. Um, and, you know, I always have something green on my plate. So whether that's just like a little sprinkling of rocket or spinach leaves, it's always something green. So I, you know, I don't eat brown food. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I've got teenage children and I've sort of tried to instill in them, you know, you can't have a plate of brown food. So when they're eating toast and eggs and bacon for breakfast, I'm like, it's brown. <laughs> and they'll roll yeah. their eyes and they'll pick up one spinach leaf and pop it yeah. on their plate. And I'm like, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, you know, over the years, like drilled into them, donate brown food. So, yeah, <laughs> so so it's just incorporating those non-negotiables. So then it's not willpower. It's yes. actually changing, you know, consciously changing and yes. choosing something different. Yeah, I love all of that. I love that it's practical, you know, and you're breaking it down and it's individualised. I think that's the key because we are, you know, as human beings, um, human beings so here we go like the whole you know can't get the words out um <laughs> you know the, we're human beings and we're all uniquely different so having that sort of personalized approach that you do I think is really needed as well absolutely that's it and we've all got different things going on and we're all at different stages in that transition journey as well so yeah, yeah absolutely well, we're going to pop all the details of where people can reach out to you. I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your gifts on the show. Um, I know that this is going to be a topic that people need to hear, but also we need to start, you know, having these amazing conversations as well and raising the awareness of it as well. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you, Christine, so much for having me on the show and thanks everyone for watching. 
Now, before you go, we've got five questions that we've been asking our guests. It's just so that they can get to know you on a bit of a personal level. In the morning, are you a tea or coffee person? Coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely definitely i will never take away your coffee or your wine because oh. you know, like oh there you go there you go ladies you've heard it <laughs> <laughs> um would you prefer to curl up and watch a movie or read a book Ooh, read a book yeah yeah would you prefer the country or the beach beach yeah and if you were going on holidays would you prefer to travel by boat or by plane Oh, interesting question. I would have to say plane. I'm not a cruise person. Okay. Yeah. But I've done that once. Yeah. No, no. Okay. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you were to have a dinner party, what is, oh, I should say, who is one guest that Ooh. you would love to invite either from the past or the present? Oh, you know what? I think I've been watching his reels all morning. I would have to invite Ryan Gosling. Oh, yes. In a pink suit. Yes. That thing can for me. Yeah. No, I totally get it and I totally agree with you. I yeah. think that would have been amazing. Not, not for the, I mean, he's very funny, to be honest. Yes. Bonus. But I was going to say, probably not for the conversation. I'd probably be just be perving the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like good eye candy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I would love to say something profound and someone amazingly interesting to sit and have a conversation with. Uh, yeah, no, at the moment I'm just up for a good perv. Yeah, okay. I love it. I absolutely love it. So mine would be Ryan Reynolds, but and I know that he's married. Yeah, so I know. All good, so. Like, you know, either yeah. or would go wrong. Yeah, no, absolutely. Totally get it. So thank you so much, beautiful, for being here. Thank and you so much. I want to say thank you to everyone who is watching this episode. Thank you so much. If you've liked it, remember to hit the like and subscribe bar, uh, button above. And remember to live life to the fullest every single day. Love and light to you all.